guys, it's Gwen, and today we're doing something that's kind of normal for me and might be a little weird for you. So my sister texted me today and asked if I was free tonight, and I said, no, sorry, I have to build an evil bunny suit. And she said, another one? And I said, yeah, I guess it's my new hobby. This is my life. So I have four days to make a costume for Mr. Hop, the evil bunny rabbit monster thing from Mr. Hop's Playhouse. And since you guys asked how I made my last evil bunny costume, I thought it'd be fun to show you on this one. All you're going to need for this costume is a stuffed rabbit, preferably one that your grandmother lovingly knit for you with cute button eyes and long floppy ears and a conspicuously missing mouth. Sorry, that's the only jump scare, I promise. I'm really going to use a white rabbit suit with a mask, blue fabric, some scraps, elastic, and some thread, which should match my fabric even though this definitely doesn't. The first thing I did was put on my rabbit suit for completely practical reasons. If you don't know how it moves, how will you make a lean, mean, nightmare machine? Mr. Hop has pants, so I marked where I wanted them to sit. Some people use chalk. True warriors use pins to add a little excitement and risk to their sewing experience. Plus, this way I don't have to wash any chalk marks out. I measured about five inches above the seam of the foot and cut through just the fur, not the lining. We're leaving the lining alone. Say hello to Mr. Meowth, everyone. He helped me thread the feet up through the legs and turn them inside out to get them out of the way for the next cut I'm gonna make. Just kidding, he made my foot fall asleep and tried to figure out why I wasn't petting him. I cut the waistline, but not where I marked it with the pins because I got nervous that my tools were lying to me, so I cut it three inches lower. I was supposed to lay my fabric as flat as possible, but um, not on the carpet. My mother is probably watching this right now, so I promise I know better, Mama. Now I have this stunning pair of faux fur pants. Change of plans. Evil bunnies are out, fawns are in, and okay, I'm over them. Blue fabric time. I folded my fabric in half, laid it flat, and well, according to the third law of feline dynamics, anything soft laid on the floor will attract the nearest cat at a velocity inversely proportional to how much it was intended for that cat's use. I marked out a rectangle about as long as a giant's leg and twice as wide. Then I tested it just to make sure that this was actually human-sized. Since Mr. Meowth was insisting on being the star of the show, I figured he should look the part. How long do you think you can keep that on? Houdini spent more time in handcuffs. Then I cut my pants into two pieces on the fold. I pinned both pieces in half, long ways, but only like eh, five eighths of the way up, and I sewed both pieces into tubes as I had pinned them. I didn't mean to give you a close-up view of my ring, but it's hard to sew without your hands. I feel like this question is coming in the comments, so yes, AJ and I are married. It's day two. Different day, same cat. He seems sleepier today though. I pinned the unsewn sections of the tubes together to form a bigger tube at the top, which sounds weird, but basically that's what pants are. Then, because Mr. Meowth hadn't moved yet, I got kind of finicky with the pins. AJ does this thing where if Mr. Meowth steals his chair, he won't take it back, he just finds another chair. And I very lightly make fun of him for it, but I feel like this is worse. At least AJ still gets work done. Wow, that's a lot of pins. I sewed the tubes together and then hemmed the pants by folding them up from the bottom twice and pinning it in place, like this. Sew that in place and I was getting close to having something that I could try on. The best creepy word to rhyme to is that you've got bled, you've got spread, head, which often goes with dead, red, which comes out when your head <laughs> comes off when you're dead. Of course, dread is just... Mm -hmm. What about bread? I decided to work on the lyrics first in this case. Okay. Which is a little interesting because it is like writing weird poetry. So I think that lullaby kind of thing or? A little bit. It's it's definitely gonna be splashed in. And right back to sewing so I can try out my pants. So I just checked that the pants were fitting over the suit the way I wanted them to, double checked them in a mirror, and the the pants didn't make me run like that. The camera did. Then I measured my cat. Nose to tail, he is exactly humongous. Then I marked a line around the top of my pants, folded it over at the line, pinned it in place, and got stuck under my cat again. I really didn't realize how big a problem this is. Then I sewed around the waist of the pants about an inch from the top. This seam doubles as a tunnel that I could thread the elastic through and worked it all the way around the waist like an inchworm walking, which was very slow and you have no idea how sped up the shot is. Then I pinned the two ends together and sewed them in place. I hand sewed them to the suit so that our Mr. Hop could run around without worrying about losing them and you probably should too because it turns out that if you don't have my hips, these will fall right off. Day three and we're gonna need another pair of pants. If you knock over that camera, I swear. Run from Mr. Hop, run. Either I just really annoyed my cat, or I discovered that he was the hero we always needed. The guardian in the dark. Our only hope against Mr. Hop. I should make him a cape. Anyway, I measured the bunny's waist and legs, then cut out two pieces of cloth that were a little bit longer than his legs and a little bit wider than half of his waist, which ended up weirdly square. 
Then I pinned them partway up, sewed them into excellent tubes, and tried them on the bunny because I have a bad habit of putting too much work into things that end up only being used for one shot, but I didn't want it to look like a diaper. I cut the extra off and sewed the pants together as I had pinned them. If you're like me and think that stuffed animals need their tails free so that they can keep their balance, you'll be happy to know that I marked a tail hole for him. Just like before, I pinned the hem of the pants and the waist, sewed all the way around, this time with a classy zigzag stitch for kicks, and also sewed down the edges of the tail hole and performed another inchworm maneuver with a piece of elastic. If you're wondering why I put all this time into making two complete pairs of pants instead of just purchasing them, there is a very simple answer. I did not think it would take this long. Also, I saw an opportunity to make both Mr. Hops match exactly, and I took it. Finally, new fabric. I cut out four rectangles, all in different sizes. The biggest was about twice the size of my face, and the smallest was about the size of a long wallet. I pinned each of them in half like a taco. When I got my sewing machine, I really thought that my cat would be, I don't know, scared of the weird noisy stabby machine, but he is not. But he does growl at the doorbell and won't let me pet him after I've peeled an orange. I'm glad the universe is gonna have a record how much you help. I sewed my tacos along one edge to make them into tubes because apparently that's what I do. This next shot is ostensibly to show you what I did next with my rectangle taco tubes, but I just wanted to show you my husband going to see if it's raining and my cat following him because going outside is cooler than bugging me. Are there words to this, or is this just a... Yes. Okay. I am finalized, but I believe it's just me. Mr. Hop, Mr. Hop, chases you until you drop. Mr. Hop. <laughs> Something like that. <laughs> That's not creepy at all. I turned the tubes inside out, then folded both ends in, and pinned them shut. Then I sewed the ends with a white zigzag stitch because I asked myself, what would my grandmother do? And while I can't confirm either of them ever made a bow tie for a bunny, I think they would approve. Want to see a magic trick? Put one taco down, two tacos down, boom! Two tacos make a bow tie. I wrapped a third narrow strip of fabric around the middle just to make it official. I hand stitched the back of the bows to keep them together, then hand stitched the large one to the bunny suit and the smaller one to the stuffed bunny. We gotta talk to the little one about what he's doing with his ears, but there is something else wrong here. This thing is still too cute. Trying to use, sorry, we're editing the word pretending. No one hides from his eyes, sometimes they're pretending. I was not very helpful. I took off the ears with a seam ripper, which now that I say it out loud sounds like I committed some sort of crime. Like, I'm the seam ripper. I prowl the old streets of London and I take your ears and your eyes. Wow. Um, let's move on to something happier. Kittens, rainbows, marshmallows. Ignore me while I yank out his whiskers too. Uh, they're weird. Is this an improvement, Mr. Meowse? I traced the old ears and made them twice as long, then cut two of those bigger, better ears out of the fur pants that I accidentally made earlier. Did this video need a second cat? I cut two more big ears out of this pink fabric and then out of this weird polka dot vest that came with the bunny suit because it's backed with foam and I need that foam. Just to recap, I ended up with two foam ears, two pink ears, two fur ears, uh, two more fur ears, and two polka dot ears accidents happen. I sewed the pink ears to the foam ears to give them structure. Then I used overwhelming force to get the ears back from Mr. Meows. He was very upset. And pinned the fur ears to the pink ears right sides together and sewed around the long edges. As I tried them on the mask, thankfully I did not get too attached because four hours into filming our musical, AJ asked me if it was okay to chop one of them in half. And then we did. I'm okay. I traced the eyes which I took out of the mask and used them to cut out two black eye shapes. This cloth is mostly see-through, by the way. You know you did it right when it stares back at you with cold, dead eyes. I drew this mouth shape, then completely disregarded it when I cut out my fabric, but it was fun either way. Then I cut out a bunch of teeth. Oh, how many? Um, this many. Then I pinned the edges of the mouth under and I posted this photo to Instagram and only one of you said it looked like a rotten banana. I sewed the edges under, pinned it to the mask and hand sewed it on from there. Both the cats stopped by to offer support and advice and chew on the little plastic thingies that used to be the ears. I assumed this was the key to my success. I pinned the teeth on until it looked like Mr. Hop had braces. I glued each tooth on individually and only burned my fingers on one of them, so that's a 94% success rate. That's not a joke, I actually did the math. I also hot glued the eyes to the foam. Then I hand stitched the fur to the black fabric while talking to my friends on Skype, which means that every once in a while they got a glimpse of this face staring back at them. I called it a sneak peek of the musical. They called it terrifying. I sewed the ears on and went back to the hot glue to make these drippy shapes on a piece of parchment paper. While I could have just waited for them to cool, I didn't have time for that, so I threw them in the freezer, pulled them back out 30 seconds later, painted them black, and then I had to wait. The freezer doesn't help paint dry. I glued four of them under the eyes and, well, that was it. 
Mr. Hop costume complete. He still might be too cute. Thank you so much for watching, guys. I hope you enjoyed seeing how I put this guy together, and I hope you also enjoyed seeing how he lost this ear in our musical. If you haven't seen it yet, check it out over there. If you want to see more behind-the-scenes things, you can check out our Patreon, where we post videos for you guys about what's going on backstage. Make sure you hit that subscribe button, and that you also smash that notification bell so that you catch every video we upload. Beard salute!